Right, the war begins. We have a kid nuts season three, episode four. Reactions now slash analysis. Let's get it. ReZero season three just dropped another banger episode. 10 out of 10. This has to be the most cooked we've ever been though. I mean, just think of everything that's going wrong right now. Capella can turn into a regenerating dragon. Two mm. more powerful new enemies. Well, of course, it's seeming like that, right? Whenever I hear like light novel readers like say this shit, it's pretty much confirming because like you could assume that like Capella is talking through this dragon. It's like possessing a dragon, but it's more likely that she can just turn into this dragon that can have high regen. Generating dragon. Two more powerful new enemies just appeared out of nowhere. Body got Teresio. Another Archbishop of Gluttony. Reinhardt's dad kidnaps a lolly. Echoes in a coma. You know what? The apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. How many times have we made the Reinhardt is a lolicon joke during our, you know, ReZero marathon? Heinkel, this is where he learned it from. Had kidnaps a lolly. Echoes in a coma. Mimi's bleeding to death. Otto no. is nowhere to be found. Subaru's legs about to fall off. Rem's still asleep. And Regulus wants to take Amelia's virginity. But to the good thing right now is that Regulus probably won't lose his virginity because he never loses. And Otto, everyone still remembers him. So. Maybe he only got his name eaten away. Who knows what's really happened, but the last time we saw him, he was with Lai. He's about to fall off. Rem's still asleep, and Regulus wants to take Amelia's virginity. But to be fair, who doesn't? Can we really blame him? It's well within his rights as a man. No, as a human. To desire such a reasonable thing, and to deprive him of one of his most basic- I always sure. thought Al and Priscilla were suspicious characters who gave off the vibe that they were always hiding information. And this episode, Al gives us a hint on how to avoid being eaten by gluttony. He yep. says not to use your real name, which- well, it seems like I'm, I'm theorizing that because Krush and Rem, right? Look at the difference. Rem actually introduces herself. Rem gets a name and memory. Krush only got memory. But like if you give away your name, it seems like that's how you get your name completely erased as well. Al and Priscilla? There's something off. There's something off with Al. The anime hasn't done a good job in showing all the cut content from season one, which makes him a very shady, scary individual who hates Rem and Rem. And most likely has an authority or maybe has some other dark powers. Being eaten by gluttony. He says not to use your real name, which would have been nice to know like two seasons ago because yep. that's exactly what Rem did. Gluttony asked her, who are you? And then Rem said, Nene. Yep. Cruz didn't say though, right? And even if those people might have, you know, I, I don't think that it's kind of like well public known knowledge. And I don't think like a random kid like Lai I don't think they even know that shit. I think they're just like specifically making a point that if you give your name, your name is gone. Damn it, Ram. So the idea is that if he doesn't know your name, then he shouldn't be able to eat it. But how did Al know that? Where? How do we know that? I don't know. The cut content also tells us that Al has episodic memory loss, which is different from total memory loss, but. Maybe that has to do with something? How did he get this information? And how did he know Gluttony was even here in the first place? Did Al mm. read the light novel? And this- I don't know. Maybe Al also has a fucking gospel, bro. Maybe Al has a grimoire. That's no, the grimoire, there's only two copies and they're both gone. Well, yeah, they're both gone now. Both copies of the, of the Tomb of Wisdom that Echidna, Echidna gave to Roswell and Biaco. It's gone. It's, there's only defect gospels and Echidna's, you know, uh, authority of greed. <laughs> Al could have a gospel. You never fucking know. I don't know. There's something very shady about him, though. This chapter of the light novel, Subaru notes how the Archbishop of Pride could be in the city as well. And Betelgeuse did tell us that the Pride seat was vacant, but it's been almost two years since season- I want to believe that Al has the authority of Pride. Maybe Al is the- I don't- well, until the church recognizes and you've kind of joined, right? You're not really an Archbishop. Subaru in season one, episode like 23, he- like he pretty much- he he could he is after season one content he has you know the witch factor of sloth in him like he pretty much is archbishop status if he was recognized by the church the cult of the witch right it could be in the city as well and Betelgeuse did tell us that the pride seat was vacant but it's been almost two years since season one so it's possible that they could have filled it by now so maybe one of these two new enemies is nah this is bodyguardy and this is Teresia. And Al might have the authority of pride. And if he does, then he could be the, uh, you know, quote unquote, Archbishop of Pride or someone that's qualified for that position. The Archbishop of Pride. I'll talk more about them later, but let's discuss Capella for a second. Her broadcast was pretty horrifying this episode. We could hear what sounded like people being killed, followed mm. by this other noise that was even more disturbing. Apparently things were being twisted and ground up. 
It was kind of hard to tell what the sound was, but in the light novel, it's described as the buzzing of insects. And that's about what? all we're supposed to know it. Buzzing of insects? I thought it was some sort of grinding, uh, twisting, you know, uh, friction that we were hearing, but insects? She's torturing them with insects. She seems to have this power that allows her to change into a dragon in the trailer and the opening. It looks like she has this power that just like summons these like twin lion faces. So she can also kind of, I don't know, summon insects out of nowhere and tortures people with it, I guess. At this time, I also thought Capella. Oh shit, that's my alarm. It must be time for us to appreciate Krush Karsten. I really okay. like how unique and interesting her abilities are, despite them not being as overpowered as most of the other characters. Fun fact, Krush is afraid of heights, and that's why when she looks like she's in love with Subaru, she's actually just holding on to him for dear life. So, I thought that if this was not the Krush Karsten with the memory loss, would she have still acted this way? I thought this is kind of like dainty, ladylike, um personality type coming out of Krush because obviously she got her name erased. One of the things that she couldn't do was like kind of smile like a lady that was mentioned in season two. But now with the name erased, she, she has this other side that's more ladylike, right? So thanks to Lai, I guess, you know, we get little dainty, cute slice of life scenes like this. Life. She's one of the most underrated waifus in all of ReZero, and I literally can't stop watching that gif of her putting her hair up. It's been difficult because just like Krush in the beginning of season two, she could peg a man, no lie. I can't stop watching it. Like Krush in the beginning of season two, I had to edit this video with- I don't remember that! Capella's voice actress- Only one hand, huh? I don't remember this scene happening though. One hand. Capella's voice actress is amazing, but Capella herself has such a hateful personality, I'm surprised she isn't the Archbishop of Wrath instead of Lust. Mm. And guys, I hate to admit this, but all gooning aside, Capella is the- Aldebrand maxing. Basically, if you want to get random internet points online, just be super down bad, bro. All you have to do is say the most unhinged, degenerate Coomer shit, then you, can, you too can go viral. If that's what you want. Sure, if that's how you want to be perceived, get your internet points, man. All gooning aside, Capella is the most fucked up sadistic character in ReZero. I know it's difficult for us men to do this sometimes, but if we just ignore how hot she is for a second and actually listen to what she ReZero fans are extra horny lately? No, they're not. These are the same people that when Mushoku Tensei airs, they're gonna say the same shit about that. Like, it's just because ReZero is trending right now. It's airing. It's the popular thing. Everyone's gonna bandwagon. Everyone wants random internet points. Everyone wants the attention. They say unhinged shit. Haha, <laughs> Kumar content! Ooh, goon, goon, and then everyone starts laughing, and it's 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 it's, it's just that it's it, it. I think it's there's no harm. Hey, there's no harm. It, it's just that's the meta. You just be super down bad online on Twitter, say the most deranged shit. People think it's funny. Enjoy your tweets, uh, your upvotes. She's saying Capella calls you a meat sack, and Why? that's just a bit too far, don't you think? I can be her slave, and I can be her dog, but she keeps calling her meat scraps. Because we're actually food for her. Does she view us as livestock? I'm not a meat sack. Why is that the only insult she can come up with? Not even Sasha from AOT talked about meat this much. Beatrice and Rom were known for having harsh insults, but... Cap Maybe the obsession with the meat scraps is that she literally views us as livestock. Maybe something about her philosophy as, you know, the Archbishop of Pride is like... She may believes in a demi-human master race? And she thinks that Ningans, these humans are just... Actual livestock, they're like we're inferior. Maybe that's kind of the theme going on with it. I'm not sure. Pella's on a totally different level. Her insults are genuinely hateful, disturbing, and it's clear that she just completely despises humanity. Anyway, yeah, she's very a dragon hostile. this episode, and the opening already showed us her ability to transform Ooh. part of her body. But before we all just assume she's a human who can transform into a dragon, let's not rule out the possibility that she's a dragon who could transform into a human based. Oh, that's another good one. Okay, I thought that, okay, I, I thought we were going to go back to this opening statement about how, you know, Capella could be possessing a dragon, but if we're going to go in with Capella turning into a dragon, she could be a dragon that has turned into this, so perfectly fine. On her dialogue, she doesn't seem very fond of humans, so maybe the dragon was her original form. And if the dra- but like, do you think that a source material reader like a kid nut 
would give such a big hint away like that as almost like a confirmation. This feels like a red herring to me. I don't know. But let's go with the mindset that she was a dragon that turned into Capella, like the blonde form. But it's interesting how she still has these resemblances of Lugunican royalty. What do we know about dragons? Well, Volcanica, Divine Dragon, which is not this dragon, made a covenant with the Lugunican family, right? It's like a blood pact. So I'm thinking that maybe if there was some association with that covenant directly with the royal family, and then perhaps this dragon can turn into a humanoid that resembles Lugunican royalty, but I fail to see how this dragon can be connected to that covenant, which only seems to exist on Volcanica. I feel like this is a red herring, but it's a pretty interesting thought that it, it's a dragon to human rather than human to dragon. And that's why she views humans as worthless bags of meat. It's possible, right? Maybe. And no, that's not a spoiler. I don't put spoilers in these videos, guys. Except for this one. Priscilla gets naked. Anyway. <laughs> okay, Priscilla gets naked. Because of her authority, Capella's actual form is unknown. So it's literally like source material is hasn't confirmed fucking anything. It could be either or. But the authority clearly lets her turn into different beasts and partial transformations of humanoids. Maybe she's a demi-human, you know, who really has, like, superiority over humans. And if we're gonna, if we're gonna go with that mindset, because of the demi-human war that happened in Lugunica, and because of the Lugunican, like, traits, right? Is there a connection here? Is this really a secret love child? <laughs> a demi-human love child? Lugunican family that felt betrayed? And now, I don't know, it just hates humans? Who knows? Except for this one, Priscilla. Ooh, Liliana and Priscilla. Priscilla is so... Thick. I mean, she is the most thick girl of ReZero. Bus size. I don't know about ass. Liliana, though, <laughs> she's drooling. Holy shit. Gets naked. Anyway, Capella Emirata Lugunica is the name Chan of a princess Summer. who was supposed to be dead over 50 years ago, back when Wilhelm was a kid. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't appear to be the same age as Wilhelm. And but how many times have we seen lollies that are so, so old, so I don't really care about the whole like you know physical appearance but doesn't appear to be the same age as wilhelm in fact her age is a bit Sus. maybe we should put our dicks away subaru finally meets gluttony at least one of them because mm -hmm. there's two now and this isn't just a clone of the other one because he has a different name Roy, i know there's a lot Alfred. going on this season but don't forget that our main objective after season one was to wake rem up so if yep. subaru can kill gluttony it's possible that she might wake up however but which one right there's two of them. Are we doing this Demon Slayer shit where you have to kill both Lai and Roy at the same time? You know that thing where suddenly you got these fucking upper rank moon that show up? You cut them in the fucking neck, but it's like, haha, I won't die until you kill my partner at the same time. Wake up. However, it's equally possible that if we kill Gluttony, Rem might never wake up. So maybe it's better to keep him alive. These two. I mean. She's never gonna wake up regardless. It's, 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 what do we do? We don't do anything? She's not going to wake up? We do something, at least there's an opportunity there. It makes sense to me that if you kill a person that has a power that's activated, that power would go away. And if the power doesn't go away, as in we kill and she's still asleep, maybe there's potential for us to absorb the witch factor of gluttony. It seems like that's the route we're going in terms of super collecting and being the uniter, you know, Pleiades, the constellation. And maybe we can have the authority of gluttony that changes into a different power that allows us to wake people up and give names back. Who knows? Two new witch cultists were pretty interesting. Well, this one was interesting, at least. The other is just a guy with a bunch of arms who reminds body me gotti. of Body Gotti from yeah. the Shoku But Wilhelm has an interesting reaction while fighting this woman. Mm -hmm. And earlier in the episode, he notes that she must have the divine protection of the Shinigami, which yep. allows her to inflict wounds that never heal. The wound Mimi receives this episode can't be healed even by Felix, who's one of the strongest healers. Felix low-key has been so fraudulent in the anime, man. The amount of Felix Glaze is crazy from what I've read from the cut content as well as some of the other like side stories. But the anime representation of Felix, what the fuck is he doing? Can't even heal Subaru's gate properly. Didn't even know what the fuck to do during the White Whale subjugation when his only role is to heal the spell. Subaru had to make, yo, what are you doing? Go wake the people up. There were some good moments in the, uh, 
our village where she did protect us. She figured out who the finger was for sure. I'll give Felix that. Felix was pretty bad in the beginning of season two. I think a lot of people hated Felix because he thought about, he brought up the fact of, hey, maybe we should disband this, you know, this, this teamwork, right? This, this, al this alliance we have, let's get rid of that. I think a lot of people are upset about Felix about that. And that's pretty much all of Felix out three season two. And if Felix comes back in season three, <laughs> shit, it's just, yeah, I, I guess he helped, you know, patch Subaru up, but can't fucking heal Mimi. And yeah, of course, it's, it's an unreasonable power. You can't heal this thing. It's a bullshit divine protection. But at the same time, if you think about Felix's like merits, his feats that we've seen compared to the glaze and the lore, it's looking so fraudulent, right? It, it just, Felix just feels to me, just it's so beyond fraudulent. And regarding this, it's like the wound simply, it's not about opening or closing. It's that the closer you are in proximity to that user who had that divine protection of the Shinigami, the more it's going to open up and start bleeding out, right? And that's the cut content from season two that I cannot believe the anime left out. Some crazy ass shit. Literally after the meeting with, you know, Felix and everybody talking about should we disband our alliance, Wilhelm feels like he can trust Subaru enough to tell him these things, which hints that either Teresia is back or someone else with that divine protection that's been inherited has shown up. I thought that maybe it was Lai Batenkaitis at that moment thinking, oh, okay, this is the secret love child between fucking Teresia and, you know, and the beast man because Wilhelm's a terrible husband, which is a stupid ass theory, but you could do the mental gymnastics to kind of reason as to why that could happen. Receives this episode can't be healed even by Felix, who's one of the strongest healers that ever lived. Just to put it in perspective guys, if Felix specialized in any other type of magic, he would be a monster. Like a national threat. But because he's just a harmless healer with adorable Water. cat ears and a bussy and a penis, nobody mm. cares. Now there was some- And it's not that nobody cares, it's, it's that the representation of Felix just sucks. It's not that because he's a trap, it's just beats, right? I care about the actual things that he's accomplished, she ain't do shit. And it's a bit unfair right now, for sure. But wouldn't it be cool if it's like, oh, Felix is a such a literally the best user of you know water magic to the point that Felix can override the divine protection of Shinigami. Wouldn't that be really amazing? But Tapi ain't gonna give him that because that thing kind of fucks with the plot. Nobody cares. Now there was some cut content that pretty much reveals who this is, but Parisia von Austria, come on. Make the connections. I'm just not going to spoil that because I think it's obvious they're saving it to be revealed in the future and I don't want to ruin that for anyone. Basically, it's not a spoiler though. You work with the logic and you see, right? Well, it would be a spoiler for him because he's a source material reader. We're just building up logic and trying to figure out who this is and everything is pointing out to Teresa until the anime episode actually confirms it's not a thing right yet. Basically, Wilhelm was supposed to mention that he too suffered an unhealable wound from this yeah. woman in the past, and he literally says her name. But again, I just don't have it <laughs> Gee, in my heart. Gee, I wonder who would. I considered revealing it to you guys. I don't know what to say if you can't figure this part out. I don't bl like it, like now with this information. Even if you're an anime only, you should be able to piece it out. Like it's it's very very obvious at this point who it should be, but. You know, we'll, we'll wait, we'll wait. But ultimately, I think it would hit a lot harder if the anime does. As for the other cut content, first of all, Capella was supposed to be involved in this fight. Ricardo she was, was flying sick. around breathing fire and shit, but I don't blame them. I uh, White Fox saving budget? I wouldn't want to animate that either. Surprisingly, yeah. they also added some content that wasn't in the novel. The visuals of Typhon's remains were one of the most badass things I've seen so far this season. Yep, and remember, not Typhon, it's fucking T-Phone to me. I don't care, I say how the Japanese people say it. And I thought it was Bones. People said it was Bones. The remains is literally T-Phone. Look at her. She just looks kind of like fossilized, right? This is her arms. You can like see the little flower piece in her hair too, this is fucked up. Written about anywhere. Also, at the start of the episode, we saw the dead bodies of the city guards, but mm. later they've been replaced with those creepy egg things that- Oh, I didn't realize that it was the uh, same area, but it was. That's creepy as fuck. So these things aren't just like from nowhere. I guess it takes some sacrifices, like human corpses. Whose power could this be? I'm gonna probably think Capella, right? I, 
I don't think this is regular. I don't think it makes sense that it's regulus or serious. Makes no sense. I don't think it's, you know, gluttony either. But lust, capella, if we work with the whole animals, insects, those kind of themes, for sure I could believe that this is her power. Or it's something else entirely, but it's seeming like, you know, it's it's like it's got even the roots, right? I thought it was coming from underneath. It's looking like like larva eggs about to fucking hatch something. Creepy egg things that look like they were copied from an alien movie. You're probably wondering what these are and why they're here. Well, so am I because there was no mention of eggs in the novel. These were Ooh. actually supposed to What? There was no eggs in the novel? They're supposed to be stones. There was a dense odor of spilled blood, and the paving stones were dyed red to the point that it evoked the expression of a sea of blood. However, there was not even a single corpse lying around. I think the corpse kind of turned into these egg-like things. In their stead were bizarre creatures. They were pink-colored masses of flesh. As far as descriptions went, Super felt that this was the most fitting. Their pink-colored surfaces were glossy, warped, and irregular in form, like mud dumplings made by children. <laughs> Again, like, the... The way that they described it's just shit, like, because the, they got a, there's no pictures, right? They're, they're trying to fucking give you, like, a detail of what to imagine. It's, it's, it's so descriptive. They were large enough that Subaru couldn't comfortably put both arms, uh, both arms around one, and there were at least 20 of them. If you play StarCraft, immediately I saw this, I thought, like, Zerg, like, hatching, larva, monsters coming out. It to be big chunks of flesh that were described as creatures, almost implying that they're alive. But I'm totally fine with the change, and I thought the eggs were a pretty cool and mysterious addition. I guess the biggest piece of cut content would be Subaru's actual reasoning for not immediately trying to rescue Amelia. The subtitles made it seem like he wants to stop Lust from doing these broadcasts, which didn't really make sense. Amelia looks like she's about to get pregnant, and that's a- I don't think so. I don't- I think Regulus is too much of a- He's had this many wives, and he's still a virgin? Makes no sense to me. Maybe he's been looking for a virgin wife the entire time. So am I supposed to assume that all of his wives, the hundreds before, were all not virgin, and that's why he didn't, you know, lose it? I don't- I don't know. It's just funny how everyone else is, like, doing their fucked up things. And Regulus for sure is doing a fucked up thing, but he's on a- Completely separate side quest compared to the other archbishops, right? The other archbishops are like making sure that the control towers are set and they're taking a hostage and Amelia's hostage and they're torturing, but then he's just like, yup, I want Amelia, she's gonna be my waifu. It's a much bigger problem than Capella doing another broadcast. Well, the reality is that Subaru's trying to prevent Sirius from doing a broadcast because ah. if she did. Yes, very smart, because if she does it, if everyone else acknowledges Sirius, then the entire. City of Pristella is under hostage. Something I mentioned literally in episode one or two. But I think that Liliana in the same tune, right? Liliana could be very effective. If she could, assuming that the songstress could compel the audience with their songs and make them kind of forget about Sirius, I think that would definitely work to counter the authority of Wrath. Did her authority could probably wipe out everyone in the city, Scary including shit. Amelia. Capella's dragon form not being CGI was a massive W. True. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. I think that, uh, like a benchmark, like a standard, especially in isekai or fantasy shows, of how a standard of like how much the animators actually give a fuck or like, you know, the studio uh, has to work with the resources is to check their dragons and their horse carriages. If their horse carriages are CGI, it's not usually a bad thing, but a dragon, if that's just CGI, ooh, that's kind of, that's getting pretty cringe. You, but Julius using Al Clauseria was kind of a letdown because they just didn't animate it. This spell was supposed to be a beautiful rainbow beam of magic that uses- We Al Clarissa or something is like season one stuff, right? We literally used it against the Betrigus. Didn't animate it. This spell was supposed to be a beautiful rainbow beam of magic that uses all six elements, but instead they just gave us a black puff of smoke. It reminded me of when you have to shit so bad, you literally run to the bathroom, but once you sit down on the toilet all you yeah. can do is fart apparently they saved their animation okay. budget for capella's regeneration scene because that looked really nice and i'm glad they showed us what reinhardt is doing too because he yeah how do we come with creative ways to nerf the character that can save everybody Heinkill will take felt hostage again the fruit the apple does not fall too far from the tree right just like father just like son this where he learned about the lollicon bullshit 
He obviously would have tried to stop Capella after hearing her broadcast, but he can't just leave Felt with Heinkel threatening to kill her. And fuck Heinkel, obviously, mm -hmm. but to be honest, this is the best way to counter Reinhardt. He's able- It's stupid, I hate this! It's just, how many ways can Top Eight think of benching Reinhardt? Not only is there multiple different places that's popping off where, you know, Reinhardt can't just solve like four things at once. He needs to be, you know, allocated into one specific place. Even despite that, now we have Heinkel fucking this shit. This is so annoying. This is the best way to counter Reinhardt. He's able to easily kill any bad guy, but he's really just not that good at saving people. Even in... He's just a fucking hero, and that's all he's ever gonna be. Season 1, after he defeated Elsa, she still got to cut open Subaru, and there wasn't anything Reinhardt could do about it. Emilia had to save Subaru that episode, and now more than ever, she needs him to save her. But he's too- I low-key hope that Emilia will save herself. I'm tired of fucking damsel in distress. Amelia's a strong girl. I hope that she figures some shit out and actually gets that. I, like, uh, if Subaru comes and saves her, yeah, it'll be a great moment, but like... Come on, girl. I know you can do this. He needs him to save her, but he's too busy with Krush. Anyway, the highlight for me was probably the Typhon visuals because that part was new to me, but objectively, the best scene was Capella's face yeah, regenerating. The reason Easily scene. another 10 out of 10 episode and probably my favorite of the season so far. Thank you guys so much for watching. Favorite episode so far? Maybe. They're all so good. Episode 1, I actually fucking love it, despite people thinking it's boring because I just love all the exposition. But I think that the most important things to remember is Al is very shady. He very as well could he very much well could have the authority of pride. We're thinking about, you know, empty positions, witch factors, stuff like that, which is miasma from Al, right? This is cut content. He could definitely be Oh hello, Krush. He could definitely be uh, the quote-unquote Archbishop of Pride if you assume that someone with like a witch factor and maybe he has a gospel who knows right accepted by the church but uh, who knows they're they're hiding that shit with us um what else is happening the Wilhelm Theresa von Austria with this enough cut content you should be able to piece out the information and figure out like who it is right it's, it's, the cut content literally says Theresa is the one that cut in Wilhelm how is she back that's a totally different question Erotense Pandora? Who knows? What else? Gluttony having two? I, I think it's twins? It's not even twins though. They have different last names. So it's Lai and Roy. Just like Garfield and Frederica. They got multiple baby daddies, baby mommies. I'm not really sure. And since there's two of them, do they also, do they have like identical authorities? Or are we supposed to assume that maybe Roy has a different set of powers? I'm not completely sure. And Amelia? <laughs> I think that she's gonna be alright. I think it's 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 honestly kinda like funny. Cause like everything else outside is just death and despair. And then we cut to like regular Amelia scene. And yeah, it's creepy. It's definitely grapey, but at the same time, it it it's 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 like a weird change of pace and kind of comical because it's like are you a virgin amelia it's like what the fuck is amelia gonna think but that's it for me please give mr kidna a like on the video here's the link and i will see you next time